Hey everyone, what is going on? I am Colin C and I am back from the Crypto Boys. We have a great episode for you today. One thing I'm gonna go over today is Quant Network. What's going on with it and where I think this project could be headed in years to come. All right guys, let's go ahead and get in the video. Before we jump in, you gotta smash that like button for us and also subscribe to the channel. First, I wanna start with what is Quant Network? Actually, let's start with what isn't Quant Network, and that's a blockchain. A lot of people get these mixed up is that Quant Network is not a blockchain. Quant is simply a network that sits on top of blockchains that allows interoperability to exist between blockchains and legacy finance. And the legacy finance part is going to be the most important part of this video that we'll get to later. A simple way to think of the Quant Network is you're combining the blockchain trillion dollar assets trillions of dollars of assets with the legacy finance trillions of dollars of assets now they may not go together but there there has to be interoperability between them and this is how the and this is what quant network aims to solve first let's think of interoperability let's be honest not everybody knows what it is but i'm going to try to simplify it for you in one concise meaning here so what it is is think of gas stations right back in the day you got you went up to a gas station you pumped your gas there's a gas station there and then there you could go inside maybe get a snack maybe get a, a drink a soda or something go back to your car whatever nowadays what's a gas station my wife and i were actually just traveling in florida recently a, about a month ago and there was a dunkin donuts in the gas station there was a wing stop in this gas station there there were pumps outside but i wouldn't call it a gas station they had a tire repair kits they were selling plastic baseball bats it was a convenience store it was every type of store you wanted in a gas station. That is what interoperability is. It is allowing you to kind of mix and match other to other places and share data from different sets of wherever you're sharing data from, bringing it all together. That's why interoperability is going to be so important moving forward, not only in blockchain, but also legacy finance. These already exist, but to make it happen and to make it a smooth transaction that you don't have to pay a ton of money for or take forever has not been completely figured out in the crypto space or even the legacy finance space for that matter. Understanding interoperability is obviously very important so let's think of erc20 erc20 you have to use that token on the ethereum blockchain now let's think of qrc20 that's where it's going to allow you to jump from blockchain to blockchain now let's think about what quant's going to do quant's got this 2.2.2 uh basically way to not only jump from blockchain to blockchain as the qrc20 uh token is going to allow you to do but think about it as it's now going to allow you to take separate features off of these blockchains and mix and match them together. The security of Bitcoin, the low transaction cost of ADA. However, you will not be able to really mix and match the speed because of Quant Network is built on other blockchains, right? So it's not a blockchain. It is a network built on another blockchain. It's blockchain agnostic protocol. So what that means, it's built on another blockchain. You have to use the speed speed of whatever blockchain it's built on. So you will not be able to mix and match the speed is what I'm trying to say. Now that finally brings us into Quant's overledger. The overledger is exactly what I think the crypto space has been missing and it's going to be the most uh, pivotal part of Quant moving forward because it's that blockchain agnostic protocol. You're not gonna be able to find anything that connects a DLT, a distributed ledger technology with other DLTs. Think of DLTs, so some people mix up a blockchain and DLTs, they are not the same. A DLT is the kind of the umbrella over a blockchain. All DLTs are not blockchains. What Overledger basically boils down to, it's using that smart contract feature with our legacy finance and somehow merging the two. Basically, Overledger is the world's first DLT gateway for business. Overledger will help you ensure that your business is ready to make the most of every opportunity, both now and in the future, because as an API gateway for distributed ledgers, it's the, it delivers universal interoperability connecting any system to any network and any DLT, old or new. Knowing that blockchains are just a part of a DLT is something you need to know going forward. That is gonna be very important to the quant network as we move forward and as they move forward into the future. 
Think of DLT as a database for decentralized networks. DLT uses blockchain technology to get consensus. Either proof of work or proof of stake are pretty much the main two. DLTs provide the peer-to-peer -peer ability to share information. Just think of buying and selling NFTs, is that it's going to make it much easier to do these processes and not just send that kind of data. DLT is gonna allow you to send much more data through the network. DLTs are gonna be public, they're gonna be secure, and they're gonna be cheap. So now that we have a decent idea of what quant network Network is and kind of its background behind it let's go ahead and get a little bit in the tokenomics so quant network decided to sell most of their tokens during a bear market about 45 million which not all not all sold because of this that's okay they sold about 23 million they burned just over 9 million and ended with a total supply of 14.5 million that is actually 33 percent less than bitcoin so you're talking about a total supply 12 million in circulation that is going to be extremely valuable in the future at low supply typically means very good upside for that project, especially when there was no one really competing against it. Here's one thing that I see messed up a lot is that people always say, well, what happens when the supply runs out is locked up, whatever, but it's not going to. I understand that supply is very low, which is very good, but there's 18 decimal points to one quant. So it is not going to run out anytime soon. For quant, you have to buy a licensing fee. And when you get the licensing fee, you are then paid back in quant. What that means is, is that you're paying fiat money for the fee, but you're getting back quant tokens. I see this mishandled a lot as well. So what happens is, let's say you buy your licensing fee for $100 and one quant is $100, then you're going to get one quant for that $100 of fiat you put in. You That will be a 12 month lockup period on that quant when you purchase it. So yes, of course the quant is going to be volatile. It'll go up and down with the market clearly, but the fiat doesn't change. And as quant goes up in price, it's just going to go down in the number of quant you would get. So you could get, you know, let's say quant runs up to a thousand dollars per one quant, then you would just be paying 0 0.01 or 0 0.1 quant is what you would get back for your thousand dollars you have in that lockup period if that makes sense so the fiat isn't it isn't going to change but the number of quant you would get back will change the benefits of this is that you don't have to buy quant on really an exchange you can just buy these licensing fee and get paid back in quant which is really a pretty cool idea and it's going to open up and allow more gateways because it's because your quant is then locked up into these pathways until that year mark and then you can decide to buy more licensing fees or something of that nature but it does help the network grow and it helps it stimulate it so then when people run nodes you always have enough people so it's not too cost effective and it's pretty fast network the next thing i want to get into is your ceo gilbert verdian he is phenomenal he is out in front of everybody he truly is probably one of the masterminds of our generation not talked about enough there are some things that i think he could do a little bit better which i'm not going to get into in this video but overall he does a pretty good job of seeing like even the use cases of cbdc he knows that it's coming he knows that it's going to happen he's trying to get the quant network out in front of these legacy finance type systems and trying to make it to where they are going to need this over ledger to make this interoperability happen so he's his his rap sheet's unbelievable his rap sheet is that the word i'm supposed to use no but his resume is phenomenal he's worked at every big thing i'll put up a list right here where you can kind of see um, where he's been what he's been doing and he's been pretty much everywhere gilbert is the type of ceo that you want to see in front of a project that is so new and so vast he is the type of person to bring it to the forefront in my opinion i think having him on your side in the quant network is only going to be beneficial in the long run i do have a couple concerns nothing nothing that's really bad at all but i do have a couple things that i'd like to see number one staking i know it's coming but that's got to get through number two is going to be i'd like to see more updates from the team i don't see enough from everybody else i know gilbert is out in front of everybody he does a great job but i'd like to see even more in I understand how fast and how quickly these things are moving, but I would just like to see a little bit more transparency on that end. I pretty much have this nix on every crypto I'm in right now is that I just want to see more and more information, more transparency, and I think that will help the project grow even faster. I think that provides a little bit more re uh, relaxation for your uh, community and other people who are invested in your project. My main concern with Quant is kind of my main concern with the crypto space as a whole, but specifically Quant in this example is that 
their future is not 100% based on them. Is that Gilbert and the team and really this overledger has got to be adopted by these legacy finance systems. So you've got to think that they're not, that the legacy finance systems, and, and that's what I think is the biggest part, are not going to go and make their own type of quant, which I don't think can happen because it's so complex. But it is a little bit based on that they want to use it for their CBDCs and other things like that. But if that doesn't happen, quants, I think main agenda and why I think they could be so big really doesn't happen. So I don't exactly love the idea that their success could be tied to other opinions in a different market. And obviously these trillion dollar classes coming together. But I do think the upside of quant is much bigger than any concerns I have. Overall, let's be honest, quant has an absolutely unique potential that many other cryptos, many other networks do not have. They're not a blockchain, but they can work with every blockchain. They're interoperable with pretty much everything in the system that we have at this moment right now. And they are moving quickly and they are willing to adapt to anything that comes their way. That is a very unique perspective of quant. They have extremely low supply. A low supply means higher demand. Higher demand means higher price. Means that if you get if you got in early, you are only going to benefit from this. And what else also I like about quant it is a long-term play that this is like your kids type of money this is like retiring type of money quant is something that if it's able to combine these these legacy systems and this legacy finance connect their overledger to the legacy finance networks that is going to be absolutely massive and when that does happen and you're combining trillions and trillion dollar networks together that means Quan is only going to raise quickly in price and it already has 33% less supply than Bitcoin. Think about where their price could end up. Another thing that I really like about Quan is that it doesn't really have any competitors right now. There is an interledger out there and a couple other things that do similar things to it, but nothing does right now what Quant is actually doing and no one is close to them as far as development goes in the space Quant has kind of carved out its own niche in. Because of all the things I just mentioned, Quant just might be the world's next sliced bread. There is no one doing what they're currently doing. There's very few people that have a CEO that are out in front of people with the low supply, with the ability to be able to build and interoperate with any blockchain is absolutely massive. The quant network is setting itself apart from pretty much every other project I've ever seen in crypto. All right, guys, if you like the quant network or if you got anything out of this video, go ahead and leave a comment below. I'd love to chat with you and what your thoughts are on the quant network. Obviously over here at the Crypto Boys, we are becoming very bullish on, on the quant network. It's something that we think that can absolutely explode. Again, guys, if you guys would like the video for us and subscribe to the channel, we'd appreciate. And as always, guys, we appreciate you rocking with the fittest crypto channel on YouTube. And I'm out.